Hey, what's up guys? Pan the Organizer here. And today I'm going to be showing you how to properly detail an engine bay. So the uh, test vehicle is my own BMW M550i with a beast of an engine, as you can tell, a 4.4 liter twin turbo V8. And I have detailed hundreds and hundreds of engine bays in my lifetime. And if you use common sense and the tips and tricks to do the job properly, there are no worries to be had. Don't forget, manufacturers go to great lengths to make sure that their engine bays are watertight and properly sealed so vehicles in the last 10 to 15 years there's no much worries to be had just take a few precautions if your vehicle is older than 15 years uh, like protecting uh, electronics uh, sensitive components uh, maybe your um, alternator and your air filter if you have a modified air filter and stuff like that so first of all, we're going to blow off the loose dirt, debris, and dust. I use a uh, mini portable car dryer that uh, shoots out filtered hot, warm air. And uh, that way, that gets the initial cleaning done. So I uh, do an engine bay detail roughly once a year in the springtime to spruce it up. Next, we're going to rinse the uh, engine bay from top to bottom. I always like to make sure to work on cool engine bays. So you work ideally in a garage or in the shade. Uh, try to avoid doing this on hot surfaces, working from top to bottom, again, just like you would on the paintwork. Stay uh, very loose with the pressure washer wand. If you're using that, you can use a regular garden hose as well. Just don't concentrate or focus the jet on the same spot for too long. Next, we're going to mix the cleaning solution. So you can use an APC on its own or do a mix like I'm doing right now in a foaming pump sprayer. I'm using the uh, IK Foam Pro 2. So I'm using one liter of water and I'm adding uh, one ounce of GSF or gentle snow foam, pH seven and a half. Uh, so that's roughly 30 mils. And I'm also adding uh, one ounce of GS or Green Star. That's the um, all-purpose cleaner uh, from Kosh Kemi that has a pH of 12 and a half. So 30 mils of GSF and 30 mils of GS or an ounce of GSF and an ounce of GS into one liter of water. Uh, you mix it up and you close your pump sprayer and your foaming solution is good to go. Or you can just use um, a five to one dilution ratio of the Green Star all-purpose cleaner in a spray bottle like I have on the right of the screen there. So it's as you want, anything works and you can use whatever cleaner or multi-purpose degreaser that you guys want. Again, I'll leave the links to all the products and tools in the description under the video for you guys to check them out. So uh, this is going to give me a powerful cleaning solution, not only with a lot of foam, as you can uh, see here to give lubrication and lift dirt and debris, but also thanks to the all-purpose cleaner, a uh, an alkaline kind of cleaner to cut through the grease and grime. So you spray that liberally uh, on the, uh, the hood and of course on the engine bay, and you're gonna let the product dwell for a few minutes. And then we're gonna use an assortment of different brushes to go ahead and uh, clean all the dirt and debris off. And that makes it a lot easier. Okay, so now comes the uh, actual cleaning of the engine bay. Uh, I use a different assortment of uh, many types of brushes depending on which engines I'm cleaning, the layout, the setup, that kind of stuff. Uh, typically for under the hood, I like to use a long brush, uh, something like a fender well brush. Be very careful, as you can see on camera, uh, when you're cleaning the underhood insulation. So that helps to protect against sound and heat as well. Uh, if you have some sort of a heat shield or sound deadening material, uh, you don't want to spray too hard water on there uh, or brush too vigorously so be careful again just use your common sense uh, and yeah work from top to bottom uh, typically like you'll do the same thing as the paintwork right so with the uh, different brushes you're going to break down all the uh, dirt grime and all that kind of stuff uh, before you go ahead and uh, rinse them off So for a more precise cleaning for the other components, as you can tell, I switched to another brush uh, with nylon brushes. Uh, you're free to use whatever brushes you guys want. Just keep in mind, don't use your best interior plush brushes, right, for the engine bay because there's a lot of dirt, grease, and grime. Uh, people often ask me as well, what do you do with your brushes once you're done using them? So it's pretty simple. Um, for regular brushes that I use around the vehicle, I will pressure rinse them off with the pressure washer. Uh, you can use just a regular garden hose as well and let them air dry but if you uh, did some dirty detailing like of course in the engine bay where you get some grease grime and heavier dirt 
what I do is I soak them in an APC, uh, diluted five to one. I'll let that in warm water, probably overnight, uh, to break down the uh, grease and grime. And then the next day, I'll uh, pressure rinse them off with the pressure washer or the garden hose and let them to air dry. So that's the only difference. If they're super dirty, use a uh, an APC, an all-purpose cleaner, or a multi-purpose cleaner degreaser as you guys want. And uh, you'll keep your brushes looking great and uh, be functional for a long period of time. So even if you take your time, uh, detailing an engine bay isn't that complicated or that long unless you're doing something museum worthy, right? If you're exposing your vehicle and then you might uh, want to spend a few hours sometimes or if you're doing a waterless wash or a rinseless wash in the engine bay, if you prefer that kind of wash, obviously it's going to be longer. But in this case, from beginning to end, it took me uh, roughly 15 minutes to 20 minutes tops. So it's actually pretty quick. Uh, we're not looking for a museum finish, but as you're going to see uh, in the end, guys, the results are pretty, uh, pretty awesome. So do that once a year. That's what I recommend. Your uh, engine bay is going to stay looking great for a long period of time. And of course, working in the engine bay afterwards for your mechanics or yourself uh, is a lot uh, more pleasant when you're working on a clean surface. So now is the time to rinse off all that grease, dirt, and grime along with the uh, APC uh, and gentle snow foam mix. And it rinses freely. It leaves no residue. So that's another thing a lot I like about this mix is that there are no worries afterwards. And uh, once you're done rinsing, we're going to move on to the uh, drying stage. Another quick pro tip that I have for you guys is if you're to clean your engine bay, start with the engine bay before you wash your vehicle. Because when you're done cleaning that engine bay, well, all that dirt, grease, dirt, and grime will have splashed onto your paintwork. So obviously you want to clean that right after you do your engine bay, right? So that's the proper way of doing things. So engine bay first and then cleaning the exterior second. So some like to leave their uh, engine bays to air dry. I prefer to use a car dryer, uh, like the super powerful uh, Metrovac Master Blaster Revolution, uh, dual four horsepower engines for eight horsepower of force. Uh, it's filtered a warm, hot air that comes out of there and it's very, very strong. So I like to dry the entire engine bay and make sure there's no lingering water. Um, Cause of course there are some electronics, there can be some sensitive components. So I wanna make sure uh, everything is functional. And when I'm done drying we will add a um, engine bay dressing and protectant which is very easy to apply and like I said the other way is to leave the engine bay wet you can spray that same dressing on the wet surface if you guys prefer and let it air dry over a few hours to overnight ideally 24 hours before you uh, dry the engine bay but if you guys are mobile detailers or you want to drive your car that same day I strongly recommend that uh, you dry it using a car dryer you can use a leaf blower as well if you want uh, in this case though I really find that uh, the extra power given uh, by the uh, the tool the master blaster revolution really really helps with this specific task so for the finishing touch, I always like to use a dressing and protectant. In this case, a Koch Chemi Motorplast or Koch Chemi Motorplast. Uh, it gives a natural sheen and it's going to help protect uh, all of the uh, engine parts, the rubber hoses, the power units and all that kind of stuff. It's a water displacing conserver. It has a pleasant fragrance and uh, it has a... Um, a drying non-lubricating film that prevents dirt from sticking again. So that's awesome. It's going to help uh, protect against corrosion as well and environmental factors uh, by the uh, permanently elastic protective film that it gives. It's suitable to use on a wet surface or a dry surface. I uh, applied it here on a dry surface. Uh, you can let it uh, dwell for kind of like five to 10 minutes and then use a microfiber towel to remove any high spots if you have some and you get the final result. It resists temperatures up to 250 degrees Celsius. So uh, yeah, areas of use in general are engines, housing parts, rubber hoses, powerful units of cars, commercial vehicles, and all that kind of stuff. So look at the end results, guys. I think uh, it speaks 
increase volumes as to how much better it looks compared to where we started off. So just a quick 15 to 20 minute engine bay detail will generate these results. We used very few products, just a few brushes, and uh, you can do this at home as well. And you get a stunning result like that. Uh, I, I personally am an advocate of driving a clean car, both inside and out. And that also includes the engine bay. So uh, yeah, I mean, look at this once again, just looks perfect as it came off the factory floor when it was brand new. To make sure that everything works, let's start the engine. 